One person can hold it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
guys.
Yes. Leo?
great I am. The Emmanuel this morning. The living God. Jehovah. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this morning. Officiating Minister, Pastor Shem, Minister of this house, Elevate Church, Pastor Vinod Singh, together with Pastor Kevin Singh. Other men of clergy, religious leaders, community leaders, and the community of Phoenix. It's indeed a truly sad and somber morning that we are gathered here to witness. I stand here before you with the art of aching and pain. Today, Father, we honor you and we give glory and honor to your name. We believe that the word of God is will become so central in our lives that only to the hearing of your word that we find grace, we find strength, and we commit this entire celebration to you in the name of our Lord. We ask you for your blessings upon all that will come in this morning and to join with the dear beloved families. We give glory to you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Vino. Greetings to the 
the Raving family, the Mirage family that is present here today. As the leaders of Phoenix and the community of Phoenix, on behalf of the Christian Leaders Unlimited, the Phoenix Religious Leaders Forum, the community members, we want to extend our most sincere condolences to you and your family and the passing of your dad and your son. Dear beloved, Monday the 14th of November was an ordinary dream for the Maraj family. As they got up in the morning and prepared to get ready to leave for work, make the lunch of our two dear beloved that lie here in this casket, Ashton Enzo Maraj, was just three years old. He celebrated his third birthday last Tuesday. Vinod Kumar Maraj was 60 years old. As any household, they got up on Monday morning, excited to see each other, to be with each other. Enzo's mom prepared his lunch and left him in the care of his granddad. As usual as any other morning, he jumped into the seat of the car, the front seat that he loved, getting ready for him and his granddad to drop his mom off at work. His dad was already at work and they dropped her off in the Phoenix Plaza where she's employed. Did whatever chores and made their way back home. Enzo loved the company of his granddad. Wherever he went, Enzo was the first to jump into the front seat. On that fateful day, they returned home. Granddad and grandson decided to take a nap rest in the room. At 10.45 a.m. Monday morning, the lounge of that home caught a light. Within minutes, the fire got out of control. Neighbors and witnesses on the CCTV camera came to assist, trying to get into the home because they knew that Vinod and Enzo was within the house. Young men tried frantically to break the gates, to break the burglar guards, even some sustained some burns. But the inferno that governed this home was too fierce. They were overwhelmed with smoke and they could not get in. One of the young men that called out to Vinod said all he heard was A. And that was the last voice of Vinod Maharaj that was said. All emergency services responded timelessly. By the time the blaze was put off, and when the firefighters went into the home, in the home, in the room, Next to Pinot was lying Enzo. Both were badly hurt, passing on very tragic circumstances. As a community, we were broken. As a community, we were saddened. As a community, we were seeking answers. Why? Did it have to happen to this young child and his grandfather in such tragic circumstances? Beloved, we may never have the answers. We will never know what happened that fateful day. But we know that probably and most certainly that Enzo and Vinod spoke to God before the last final moments. And ask God 
to accept him into his heavenly throne. We as community leaders feel the pain of you, Hashvir, and your missus and the rest of the family. We may never know how deep your pain is, but we certainly feel your pain as a community. These two individuals were sons of the soil of Phoenix. And each and every one of us from Phoenix supports you and your family during this most difficult time. Not only did this family lose their loved ones, the entire home was raised to the ground with nothing left there. It's going to be a difficult path that this family is going to walk, knowing that the two very persons that they loved, their child, which of the joy in their life, and the father, who was the pillar of strength, has been taken away. Their home was also taken away, with no place to go. As a community, I'm asking each and every one of us seated here and that is watching via live stream. Let us rally together. Let us come together, united as a community, to help this family build their home, to help this family pick up the pieces of their lives. No matter how small you think you are, or no matter how big you think you are, we are all at the same level that God sees us in his eyes. So let us come together. Let us rally our support and stand with this family to be able to build their home where they built the memories of the dear beloved departed, Enzo and Philippe. That is the least we can do, is let them live in that home with the memories that they enjoy of their loved ones that they brought to us. Ashwir, the painful thing that you and your family go through is not being able to open the casket and not being able to say goodbye by looking at your loved one. But know this, that in all things in life, God has his plan and purpose for each and every one of us. We are designed to fit into a puzzle. And when God finds that his puzzle is almost done and he needs the final piece to complete that puzzle. He will take that piece that is required amongst all of us and fit it into that puzzle to complete his plan. The will of God is something that we cannot question. But we can pray and ask God through the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to continue to guide us, to strengthen us, and to heal the pain that we are going through right now as a family and as a community. As we are gathered here today, loved ones, we are surrounded by the sense of belief that everything is important. That the only thing in life that's important is your love, your humility, your kindness, and your respect to each other. We may be called here today to stand, comfort, heal and offer assistance to the family. We could be called away also in a blink of an eye. The things that we carry as baggages are not important anymore. 
life and society has come and turned in a different way. And the thing that we need to hold closer to is God. The thing that we need to do every day is pray. The thing that we need to ask for every day is for God to continue to give us the breath of life each and every day. To thank Him for what we have for that day. For tomorrow is never promised. Today, if you wake up with a breath in your mouth and your heart still beating, thank God that you could be able to do things today and not ponder on what you're going to do tomorrow or down the line. Make peace with each other. Ask each other for forgiveness and embrace each other. That is the most valuable thing that we could leave this earth with. And the most precious thing we could leave earth with. Our vehicles, our homes, all the wealth will not come with us. It's just you and your soul with our Heavenly Father. And what you carry in your soul is far more important than anything that we are living with in this materialistic world. So thank you to each and every one of you that are present here today to support us, to support this family. God bless each and every one of you. As I call up Pastor Shen, who's the minister that will be addressing and leading you today. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for your great assistance. We are really indebted to the ministry and work of Pastor Mervyn Reddy and for all that he has done for uh, the family and indeed, indeed for us to be present here today and to be gathered at this lovely venue, sanctuary, in this church of Pastor Vinod Singh and for his work of ministry as well. We praise God for that. At this time, let's just look forward to a time of worship as we worship the Lord and sing this hymn of worship and praise to Him. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs, all our sins and griefs to bear. Let's sing to the Lord and thereafter our team will lead in a time of worship and we we'll look forward to a time of our funeral service this afternoon.
Father. Thank you, Jesus. All praise, all glory, all honor to you this morning. As the songwriter says, when the ocean cries, so too our soul rises to heaven. Destination that is prepared for us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The graduation service of the Lord and called to rest on the 14th of November. family and that will be paying tributes to share their memories and their relationship members of the Mirage family. I call upon Mr. Vinod Kumar's brother, Mr. Ashok Mirage, to come and pay a tribute on behalf of his brother and to share with us the wonderful fond memories that he had with the Mr. So Ashok Kumar Maharaj Say goodbye to, to my brother as well as his friends and Austin. The circumstances that called to rest was very brutal, it was very traumatic, and it was very difficult for us as a family, emotionally, physically, as well as spiritually. I also, right at the outset, want to thank uh, the pastors involved in this uh, uh, tribute to my brother and his grandson uh, for being very transparent and accommodating in terms of how we go about doing this ceremonies. I also want to thank them for giving support to my nephew and his wife during this trying time and also accept the fact that they were one of the first people at the scene during the fire offering their support and right at the outset they said they wanted to do certain things for the family and I really appreciate it. My brother Dinod was one of the most interesting characters you can ever get. From a very young age, he was one of the only ones in our family who decided to do part-time work and he did it on his own accord. And she always tells us that he started to work from 13 and 14 years old. But he did it for fun, for himself, after school on Fridays and on Saturdays. He always displayed a demeanor which everyone saw and that was that was what he was. He didn't have any hidden agenda. He was never a person who would befriend someone so that they could benefit out of him. He actually, people who befriended him benefited tremendously from him. During the past few days, when we were sitting down at home and I was just speaking to my children and my wife, and I realized that you know, uh, the impact that he had on our young lives was tremendous. 
My brother was big and tall, and he was strong. And that's one thing we knew, we always had that security with him. In the tribute which I was reading just now, um, they said he went to Lake Haven Secondary. Now, Lake Haven Secondary at that time was one of the best schools in KZN. And what came out of that was, he was very, very good in commerce and accounting. And it was just so unfortunate for him that you know in life sometimes you don't meet the correct people. You, he loved friends, he liked to make friends. And sometimes the friends always either they help you or they take you to another route. So we were all surprised one day after he finished his grade 11 and he said he's leaving school. Why? Because his friends who were with him decided to leave school because they wanted to join the father's business. Firstly for him, because he was highly gifted in commerce and accounting, he managed to get a job at Epoch Foods. So for the next five to eight years, he worked at Epoch Foods, and that's a brother that I always will remember. The one who wake up in the morning, put on his tie, and go to work and come back at five o'clock or six o'clock in the afternoon. So he always had us covered in terms of what we were being learned as young siblings. Throughout his life, he always wanted and always desired to be in company of people. That's, that's my brother's story. He was a very social being. And whenever there is a function or whenever there was functions at home, he was always around in an environment where it would create happiness and joy for all of us. He was what you call a person who we will always keep an eye on in case we get over joyful. So that's the kind of person he was. But he never should trouble anyone from the time I know him as a young person growing up in front of him. The one thing that he taught all of us, all our siblings, including our cousins and everyone else, is how to cover a book. You know the hardcover exercise books? Right up to now, I still cover it exactly the way he taught us because we should cover his books. Gift trap, silicon tape, and plastic covers, name printed neatly. That's how he used to cover all his, all his books. Today, I also want to say that one of his books that he covered that time when he was in high school, I still have it with me. That's a biology book which he was using because I used that thick hardcover notebook to stick up all my soccer pictures of the famous team which I was supporting at that time and which he used to help us to uh, enjoy watching. So that brings us to another thing that we will always remember as young children. We all love soccer in that area, in our house. And when they should have Wednesday, Wednesday night matches or on Saturday night matches, he used to always be there to take us and go to King's Meet to watch our famous team. When we had to go anywhere, he was basically our transporter. He was always there to help us. And, um, and it's, it's not the brother that many of you all maybe saw. So we saw a different side of him. We, he grew up in front of us and it was very, very different. So while he was working in Epo Foods, they had to go away to Peter Maritzburg because they were moving the whole operation that side and, and he didn't want to go because he wanted to be close to us. And that is why he had to leave work there. And, uh, and then as the pamphlet said, he worked for Bakers as well as Albany Bakery until his retirement. But during that time, as rival salesman, as a franchisee for Albany, he really excelled in it. And let me explain, let me tell each and every one of you all that to wake up on busy uh, weekends and Easter and all the celebrations that we do, he used to leave home at about 2 o'clock in the morning so that he get his order ready to deliver on time. So he was very hard working, absolutely hard working. In fact, um, most of us would not be able to do that. So that is a person that we will always remember.
You know, um, many of y'all must be most probably realize that you know without children. He he basically will want to care for anyone who wants care. And I remember that when we were young, one of our cousins was staying in the homes and against all protests and whatever else, he couldn't stand to see that our cousin staying in the homes. And he went there and he released him under his care, which technically would have been under my mother's care. So that just in itself helped the cousin of ours was late now to come out of the home, stay with us for over a year, and then once his life was stabilized, he was released back to his sister who decided to take care of him. And we all know that the fact that um, Enzo was with him in the house, and we all know from what the neighbors were saying that he wanted the child to be um, free and safe. That's the kind of person he always was. He always put everyone else first and himself and his enjoyment first. I also like to pay and sympathize with uh, Bovina and her family, Ashvir and her family, and all the immediate families during this difficult time. It's going to be hard for all of us, especially noting the fact that we are going to miss him as well as his grandchild in times when we should be celebrating the growing up in terms of them achieving the milestones. But I also want to do a special, say a special thanks to the pastors again because as much as um, uh, what you call my brother who was a, a, not a Christian but they will allow us to do our special tributes and and you know that uh, religious tolerance is something which we as a family really appreciate. Lastly, I have to pay tributes to all the neighbors and all the friends from the Brookdale area who went to their immediate assistance and tried to uh, assist. But unfortunately, due to the intensity and the outrageousness of the fire, they couldn't be saved. Today, I just want to say to my brother and grandchild Enzo, May your soul rest in peace and may your journey towards heaven be smooth sailing and to we meet again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashok Maharaj, the brother of Vinod Kumar. We have another tribute from Audrey Pillay. She's the wife of Pastor Shem Pillay, our officiating minister. each one of you in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. The Lord bless you. I acknowledge the pastors that are present this morning. Pastor Vinod Singh, Pastor Mervyn Reddy, Pastor Kevin Singh, and Pastor Shem Pale. It saddens me to pay tribute to Enzo today. We at New York Baptist Church convey our deepest sympathies to our dear family, especially to Ashvir and Angezwa. We feel your great loss. Our hearts are broken for you, and we mourn with you today. But we don't mourn as people without hope. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. We enjoyed seeing Enzo attend church with his parents. I recall how well he was dressed, like a little cool dude. And the thing that stuck out the most was that he had the cutest smile. It was a smile that made his cheeks pop out even more. Ashvir and Nguyezwa, you have done well as parents to be there and to take care of Enzo in those tender moments of his life. Upon 
hearing the news on Monday, we rushed over to the home and we were praying all the way. I prayed, when we get there, Lord, let me see Enzo running outside on the road. But I take comfort today in Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We know where Enzo is today. He is with our Father, our Creator. And I can only imagine that smile. It is beaming and it is as bright as ever before. Be assured of the support from our church and be encouraged that we are praying for you. Take comfort in Jesus. He alone will carry you through. Ashton Enzo, rest well, my dear boy, till we meet again. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you to my wife, Audrey, for the tribute. Uh, indeed, even though we've known for a short while, he's been such a live wire. And for those of you that have come here, and to, to especially to remember this little boy, I, I'm, I'm sure you realize just what a joy and a blessing he's been. In those three years, he's impacted so many lives, and we thank God for that. We're going to continue to worship God through a song, even as we'll sing this, this hymn. Let's turn to our hymn sheets. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Amen. And that's what we can hope for. That's what we can trust God for, for the blessing of his presence, his mighty hands covering us, sheltering us, giving us peace, and the blessed, be assured, the blessed assurance we have that His promises will come true, that He has mentioned. And indeed, His promises will come true. Let's sing this morning, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine.
that you are the God of the impossible this morning. You are the only potent and only present God. In all things that we do, we give you thanks. We lift up and glorify your holy name, Lord. Through birth, through celebration, and even through death. You deserve the glory, Lord. You deserve the praise and all honor this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. have another tribute somebody that knew the family and they want to show their love and pay the respects to Ashley and his wife and the rest of the Maraj family I call upon Naveen to come and share his memories and his relationship that he shared with Dr. Vinod with Enzo and the rest of the family
God's strength on this family, for God's hands upon this family. And if you see the book of Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for good of those who love Him. Who have been called accordingly to His purpose. Like I said earlier on, it was the will and purpose of God that He planned homecoming service of Vinod and Enzo according to his will. We won't realize that until we are caught up one day in the clouds of glory when we get to meet our loved ones in the heavenly throne room. Then only we will, will we understand how God works and how God operates in the spiritual realm. Our next tribute it's going to be a very emotional one because it's from Ashwir Maharaj, the son of Vinod Kumar Maharaj and the father of Ashton Enzo Maharaj. Ashwir. Ashwir is, is obviously in a state of emotion and respect that that is unable to pay a tribute. I'm going to read the obituary of Vinod and thereafter Ashton Enzo Maharaj. Vinod Kumar Maharaj was born the 22nd of May 1954. He was 68 years old. He was married with three children. In 2004, he lost his wife, Sunitha. And in 2018, he lost his younger son, Viren Maharaj. His schooling career was in Lake Haven Secondary. He thereafter worked for Baker's Bread and later on for Albany Bread until retirement. His passion was going to the beach just to sit and relax and watch the waves. He was very helpful to everyone in the community. Ashton Enzo Maharaj is the son of Ashwir Maharaj and his wife Ungizwa. He was born on the 8th of November 2019, a bright and bubbly child. He lit up the old and every place he visited with his cheerful and unforgettable smile. Like many children his age, he engaged well with playing with his toys, being curious of his surroundings, and enjoying his favorite cartoons like Peppa Pig. His visits to the church at New Hope provided a blessing to many people as he was energetic and friendly. He would be sorely missed in the neighborhood of Colorbrook as he brought cheer to all who knew him. He was the pride and joy of his parents and inseparable to his granddad Vinod. Vinod leaves behind his daughter Ravina, son Ashbir, and his grandson Rihesh, and granddaughters Tarina and Nalina and son-in-law Nuresh. Enzo will be loved and remembered by his dad Ashbir and mom Ongizwa. The memories of him will be cherished by his loving family members and a host of people in his community. We will surely love and miss you Enzo. 
God bless. Call upon Pastor Shem. Praise and worship. Pastor Shem will take over. Pastor Shem will be the officiating minister who will exalt the word of God during the celebration service. Thank you. Pastor, we just have a slight visitation at this time. We can view the life of Brother Binod and Enzo and we can put this up at this time.
Let's be joined together in worship this afternoon. Even as our worship team will lead in that very same song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Psalm 103, verse 1. Let's bless the Lord. Let's praise His name. Thank you for His grace and every blessing that He gives to us. Let's worship this at this time.
to be able to receive it as, a, as instruction and as also as a source of comfort and for us to even become ambassadors of God's work. We thank God for His goodness. Thank God for His blessings. Thank God for His spirit's leading. Even as we continue in this time of worship, even through God's work. We give praise and worship in the name of the, of the glorious Son of God, the only Savior and Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Maybe see it this time. Even as we will thank God for this opportunity and this platform for us to continue to worship. Yes, we indeed we recognize it's a funeral service. It's a time for us to say our goodbyes and it's a time of mourning as well. And I did mention to our family last, last night, yesterday evening, that the Lord does not tell us not to mourn. The Lord does not tell us that we should just put on a brave front, especially in a season of mourning. Indeed, if we just look at what the, at the happening, with just the, the aftermath of what took place, and besides the, the material and physical damage, to think of what took place. Indeed, our heartstrings are pulled. And we are called to a time of mourning, a time of, of really feeling compassion. And I'll put you know, the word of God says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen. The Lord knows what you're going through, as you on Gezwa family. And as you mourn at this time, the Lord is saying, Yes, you go through this time of mourning, but you find strength and you find comfort in the Lord. From Monday continuing, even as I've uh, responded to the family, just by a show of someone that has been attending our church very much in this year, um, even though I grew up in this area and neighborhood of Brookdale, and I've been uh, very familiar with the surroundings of Coral Brook and Cork Brook, uh, I've known some people for a few years. Uh, Ashfield is not someone I've known for that much of a time. I've seen his dad present every now and again in Brother Bino, and uh, though I've got to meet him this year, uh, coming over to witness, uh, coming over to just to pay respects, uh, respects to the family and just to prepare myself for what is going to unfold in this week. I can tell you that to some extent I've been trusting God for His strength, trusting God for His guidance, but uh, never would I have been prepared for what I'm witnessing this afternoon. Uh, they say there's a first, uh, there's a first time for, for, for various things and for various moments in my term of ministry, in my term of ministry, Ashfield family, it's the first time I'm getting to witness something like this. For the various other funerals that I've condu conducted over my 14 plus years of ministry, I've uh, never seen uh, two uh, bodies or two caskets before me. And more especially, though I've seen the manufacturing of these kind of boxes and I've seen them before, never seen one in the time when I've been, I've been present as a minister. Very sad moment indeed. Very tough moment indeed. Uh, my heartstrings were being pulled as soon as I saw the convoy coming through and just to, to, just to kind of uh, take in the moments of all that is happening. And even as I witness these moments, you can never be prepared enough. You can never have the perfect or the right things to say. There is no book written for this. When we've been waiting for Ashfield to make his way home Monday, what's say Monday evening, Monday night, to think of him, we've been trusting God and praying as he's been traveling for a few hours, even with the knowledge of this news and coming home. And even as we think of what he could have witnessed at his home and even more especially the loss, there's no textbook that is written to guide you and to help you in those moments. There's nothing that is out there that is tailor-made for you because we face moments and even as I speak to the family, I speak to the public at large, you know some of the things you've gone through. And when you take a good stock of it or take a closer look at it, you will, tell, you will say these words, I don't think anyone else has gone through what I have gone through. I don't think they felt the exact kind of pain or gone through the exact moments that I have gone through. We all go through specific moments. We all go through some specific seasons in our lives. And as I speak in one of those seasons, I can almost be lost for words as to what I can share to our family this afternoon. But I'm so glad that I have with me a book and a source of instruction and blessing that is always current. There's always a blessing in these words. There's always comfort in these words in any situation and in every season. 
And it's, in this, it's at this time that I will look forward to the instruction of God's word. To share a word of encouragement to you, a word of comfort to you, and to also look at the blessing of God's instruction. Even though this is new to me, it is not new to the Lord. This is not something unknown to the Lord. Especially in one of the ways we describe him is as the Alpha and the Omega. The God knows the beginning and the end. Another Bible verse also declares that from eternity to eternity, you are God. We serve a God that is eternal. He knows all these moments. He knows all this unfolding. And even as we trust Him for His Spirit's leading, we know that He will guide us in these moments. He knows very well what is taking place. You now, Pastor Mervyn has shared about this verse that is found in the hymn sheet. And when we were doing this, there was a good few verses that we could have chosen. Then we can speak about fighting the good fight, finishing the race. We can look at the very famous one that is found in Psalm 23, where it says, The Lord is my shepherd. But when these hymn sheets were available, and one of these verses were, was available to us, I said, you know what, this verse actually speaks quite loudly at this time. Where we say that all things work together for good, for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. We're going to be surprised as to what can even erupt and take place thereafter, how the Lord can speak to you as you in moments like this, and how He can make you a voice of even encouragement and comfort to many people that have gone through these channels. And we're going to trust God according to His words in all things. And even as I continue this afternoon and look forward to what the Word of God can encourage us and tell us in these moments, I'll just start as a reflection on the life of this lovely little boy, Enzo. I'm so glad that he's not someone that is unknown to me. I've got to see him at his home. I've got to see him smiling at our church. I've just caught glimpses of him every now and again. Even if I didn't see him, I would ask Ashby, how's Enzo? And uh, I remember trying to even remember that name. And I asked, uh, I think I forgot it the, the second time round. When Ashby told me it's Enzo, my mind just said Enzo Ferrari. I'm going to remember that name and see to that I remember this boy by the name of Enzo. And as I think of all these moments, the Lord is not silent. The Bible is not silent as to what happens to little children when the when they, when they journey on earth comes to an end. And I'm turning to and I'm, I'm turning to a portion of scripture that is found here in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 23. And the word of God says this in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 23. This is spoken by the king, David, and he says these words. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And as I sit in the presence of pastors and those that are familiar with the word of God, you would have heard this portion of scripture before. It's very famous, very telling, especially in moments like this. And just to explain the power of these words, I'd like to reflect on this story very quickly. Uh, before I do that, I just want to pay tribute. I want to thank God for the tributes that's been shared by the family and friends. Uh, Brother Ashuk as well, uh, meeting you for the first time. But as soon as you came to the stage, I could just see that it was Brother Vinod's brother. The, the likeness was there and we, we thank God for you to speak so well and just to give us the insight of the life of our brother we know. But as I continue to reflect on 2 Samuel 13 this afternoon, when King David is saying these words, he is now dead. He is actually speaking about one of his children, one of his baby boys. There was a boy that was going to be born to him. I'm not going to give you all of the story. You feel free to read 2 Samuel chapter 13 and even the chapters before that and find out about the unfolding story of this chapter, of this season, of this time in life you know, of King David. But the word of God says, and the, the, the prophet actually approached King David and told him, yes, a child is going to be born, but it's not going to live. He's, 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 he's not going to be able, he's not, he's not going to survive. A prophecy was given where the prophet told David, you're not going to have the child to survive. And even though David heard this prophecy, as a dad and as someone that has his heartstrings pulled, 
as a, as a, as a father and will, wanting and willing to see that his son will live, he decided to go on a fast. He said, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. Perhaps the Lord will overturn this prophecy. Perhaps the Lord will show forth great kindness or change his plans and make this boy to live. And he went on a fast and he was looking very somber. When the servants came to the point where they realized the boy was now late, the boy passed on and went on to another place, went on to the higher place. They, was, they were wondering, how are we going to break the news to our king? How are we going to break this news to King David? If he is so somber at this time, if he is so much intense in his fasting and looking so frail at this time and, and so weakened, how can we tell him of this news? What will he do thereafter? And when, the, when David saw on the, on the faces that the servants were looking different and that they actually he could perceive that they were, going, they were going to bring in the news that his son had passed on, he said these words, he's dead, isn't he? And they just nodded their heads. And what took place thereafter was something very different. The word of God says, thereafter, King David arose. He bathed himself, washed himself, perfumed himself, had a time of prayer, and then he asked for some food. He wanted a, 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 a food to be presented to him so that he could be able to eat whatever he wanted at that time. And his servants were perplexed. They said, we cannot understand what is taking place. While the boy was living, and while he's still at his last few laps of life, you were so somber, you were fasting, and all of a sudden, now that he's late, and now that he's gone to be with the Lord, now you're feasting, we cannot understand this. And then David said these words. He said, while the child, verse 22 says this, so he said, while the child was still alive, I fasted and I wept. For I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live. But now that he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Catch those words, people. This is what King David said. A very comforting word, especially in regards to children that have passed on. I will go to him, though he will not return to me. It is said, as we and family, that our boy is not going to be returned to us here on earth. But the Lord is saying, he is gone to a better place. He is gone to, to a greater kingdom. He is gone to the heavenly place. And how comforting, there is some encouragement in that. There is some comfort in that. In knowing that, yes, our baby boy has gone to be with the Lord. Do you know that as a pastor of God's word and a messenger of God's word, I can truthfully declare this afternoon, I can truthfully declare according to God's word, our baby Enzo is going to be with the Lord. He's gone to heaven. Like King David envisioned, he says, he's not going to come back to me. But as King David is also hoping to go to heaven, as King David is also hoping to continue to worship and dance, the word, like the word of God says, like the way David danced and find himself in heaven, he will firstly go and see his maker. And thereafter you will see his boy and indeed all the other people that have gone on before him to be with the Lord. So therefore it's so good to know that even though this is a new setting for me, even though this is a new scenario for me, as a servant of God's word, I, think I can declare that yes, children, babies that die in the Lord have truly gone on to be with the Lord. You know, when I speak those words, I'd like to bring into picture something, a few messages that I've actually preached earlier this year. I've been called on as a minister, the Lord impressed upon me, especially after two years of COVID. We as pastors have just been awakened as to how we need to speak about the end times, how we need to speak about the imminent second coming of the Lord. It is not just something we are saying. If, you ever, if you've ever witnessed the whole world being shaken, just think about what took place in those last two years. If you never thought the world could come to a standstill, have a look at what we witnessed in those two years of COVID. And as a pastor, I could not keep quiet. I needed to tell our people that the Lord's return is something that we can now foretaste and believe in. And when the Lord does return again, even though this word is not found in scripture, this word called the rapture, 
It's an happening that's going to take place where the Lord is going to take with him those that believe in him. Amen. When the Lord returns, when the Lord comes again, in that moment called the rapture, those people that declare the name of Jesus, that have been praised the name of Jesus, the word of God says they will be taken up to be with the Lord in heaven. And as we think of the group of people, I want to add another picture to that. And I'm so glad there are some movies out there that actually depict this, the scenario of what can take place when the rapture happens. What you'll find is that those people that know the Lord Jesus, that have been serving the Lord Jesus Christ, will be taken up to be with the Lord. And one obvious group of people, and one special group of people that will be taken are children. Children that are innocent, children that have never made their decision as yet, the Lord knows their innocence. The Lord knows that such is the kingdom of heaven. And children will be caught up to glory at that time of the rapture. As I continue to speak and speak for God's word and instruction and encouragement that comes from his word, we find that the Lord himself was not silent about what can take place in our lives when, when, the, when the end comes to, to us, when we have to pass on from this world. I'm so glad that as I'm reading to you from God's Word, and I hold in my hand this Bible with a, it's called the Red Letter Edition, where you find in red letters the actual words of Jesus Christ. I'm sure you enjoyed that, Pastor Peter. The Red Letter Words, amen? These are the words the Lord Himself spoke. One of, the, one of the verses the Lord himself spoke was John 14 verse 6 where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one shall come to the Father except through me. But the verse that I'd like to feature this, this afternoon is John 11 verse 25. John 11 verse 25. Another red letter verse. Another time when the Lord himself spoke these words. And this is what the Lord said. He said this. Jesus said to her, here comes the red letters. He says this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Can you imagine that? But the Lord is saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, even if he dies, he shall live. And you know, there was a time in my life when my church knows that I share this quite uh, famously and, and openly. How the Lord saved me at the age of 17. And before the Lord could save me at that age, I went through a time of questioning. I went through a time of searching. What is the answer? Which is the right route to go? Even though I grew up in church, the Lord brought me to a place where I asked some questions. And I searched, which is the way to eternal life? And when I realized it was the Lord Jesus Christ, I found out that this Lord that I'm serving, and by the way, the Lord that I'm serving, the Savior Jesus Christ that I'm serving, I haven't seen him as it. I haven't heard his voice, but I believe in him. And there are many people like him in the same way. We are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that one day, what we believe in, that faith will become sight. We will see for true, yes, this Jesus is alive. He is for real. Praise God. Amen. And what I like is that when I read the words of God, when I read the words of Jesus Christ, he doesn't just say things. The Lord doesn't just make statements. He goes forth and he proves his statements as well. When the Lord is saying these words in John 11 verse 25, he is saying this in a funeral setting. In John chapter 11, you find the rendition of the story of Lazarus being called forth from the grave. And when Jesus attends this funeral intentionally, four days later, or four days after he was told, when he came to the place, he told them, don't worry, your brother will live. And they were saying, but Lord, he's been there already for four days. And the Lord had to remind them, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, yet shall he live. Do I serve a savior that just talks and just say these words? No, he went forth and he proved his words. He called forth Lazarus from the grave, amen? And I don't know if you can even picture that sight. Lazarus coming from a tomb 
where he's been dead for four days, coming with the robes that he was wrapped up in. The word of God says even his face was wrapped up and he's coming forth after four days in the grave because the resurrection and the life called his name. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come out of the grave. And when, I, when I've seen the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ, when I've seen the blessing of, of Him being the resurrection and the life, I say this, from all the things I need to pursue, yes, I'd like a fancy car, yes, I'd like a few stories, yes, I'd like a house by the beach, just like, just like Brother Vino, loving the sound of the waves, I'd like all of that, but I'm so glad that at this one thing I'm striving for, and that is the blessing of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing the one who is the resurrection and the life. And I'm, I'm not speaking a kind of a bluff message or a degraded message. Because when I say when I say these words, should I not get some of those things? Because I like to get it. I'm yearning for me in my walk of faith. I'd like to receive some of those things. But should I not get it? How good to know that yes, for myself and for every one of you that know the Lord Jesus Christ from all the things we haven't achieved. How good to know we know the resurrection and the life. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so glad that we know His name. And as we think of the blessing of Jesus Christ being the resurrection and the life, I'd like to bring forth to you another verse at this time. A very famous verse. A verse that many people know. Dare I say that even people that are not walking in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ could have actually heard this verse sometime in their life. John 3.16 John 3.16 Many people just, they just know it. It's almost like you don't have to, it's just embedded in the memory. For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I know it's tough moments for you, Ashwin, but just catch those last words even as I mentioned that in this funeral service. Everlasting life. I can speak about everlasting life even in a funeral setting. Only because I know my Lord Jesus Christ has promised us these blessings. And He's telling us that we have the blessing of eternal life through Him. You know, sometimes we ask this question Should I serve the Savior? Should I give my life to the Savior? In regards to, uh, in, in, we ask this question What has He given to me? What has He done for me? That I should live for this Jesus. And I should serve this Jesus. Well, let's have a look at John 3.16 again, people. As you look at the verse, these 25 words in that verse, we find that Jesus gave. Jesus loved. He already loved us. He already gave for us. He already gave a promise to us of everlasting life. That verse tells you about so many things the Lord did for us loved us, gave for us, gave us a promise of everlasting life. But you know that, but did you know there's a condition in that verse? There's a word that we must catch in that verse and it must start to mean something in our lives. Because when we catch that verse, when we catch that word, that's when our lives will really be transformed. John 3.16, 25 words. Verse, it says John 3.16, catch that 16th word. And the 16th word in that verse is this, that whoever believes in Him, believe is what you must do. Jesus loved, Jesus gave, God loved, God gave, He gave us a promise, but He's telling us to do one thing, and that is to believe in Him. Do you believe in Him this afternoon? Would you look, would you look forward to believing in Jesus Christ and having the blessing, having the blessing of eternal life, and life thereafter being your portion only because you believe. You know, talking about the word belief, you know, maybe I need to add a bit more to it. You know, when I, when I, when, when, throughout the 80s more especially, maybe the late 80s and getting into the 90s, when I started to view some of these programs on, on television, I had this special fascination with the city, with the city, the city that never sleeps, this huge metropolis that's full of major buildings, the city of New York, NH, NYC, New York City. You know, when I, when I used to see those buildings, when I used to see those pictures, I should tell myself, really? 
Is there really such a place? Is there really such a city with so many buildings? Is there really such a city with such tall buildings? Is there really, does a city exact, exist like that? With two buildings like that, called the Twin Towers? Both 110 stories. Does that city, city really exist? And when I look at that, something I'm so fascinated, I think that maybe they're just making up these things. And that maybe there's just something that they put out there, some kind of addition. But you'll only know, people, if that city exists, when your plane touches down in JFK, when you somehow given a trip or a, a, a means of going to New York City, and then you walk those streets, and you see for yourselves, yes, there is such a city. Yes, there is such buildings. There is such a city as NYC. Forget about that. Even if you cannot go there, there is a place the Lord has created. There is a mansion that has your name upon it. And the Lord is saying, I have designed that for you. I have made that for you. There's a place, even though you'll be in so much in hardship here on earth, there's a place where there's no more tears, no more crying. A place that God has designed for you. Do you believe that? Like we believe some things we see on TV, do you believe that? That's what the Lord is telling you and calling for you to do this afternoon. To believe in Him and to believe in His promises. As I encourage you over the blessing of heaven, let me close with a focus on heaven. And we find that in, in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, an amazing happening takes place. I want to show you the blessing of heaven. And just to encourage you, I'd like you to say this word, heaven. Say it with me, heaven. I want you to know the reality of heaven. And as you believe, as you on Gezwa, in the reality of heaven, know that your boy has gone to be there, amen? This place called heaven. And in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, we find that the Lord is being crucified with two thieves on either side. And all of a sudden, those thieves start to have a discussion or to say a few things. And one starts to kind of tease Jesus Christ with some selfish intent. He says, Lord, why don't you bring yourself down from the cross and save us as well? He didn't want to be changed. He wanted to get back to his thieving ways, but he wanted the Lord to bring him down from the cross. Yet the other thief started to speak. And people, listen to what I'm saying. We must be very careful sometimes some of the words we say. The words that we say, the sentences we choose, might be our last. And this particular thief said this, Father, remember me when you get to your father. Jesus, remember me when you get to your father. And do you know what the Lord told him in return? Do you know what the Lord answered him? In Luke chapter 23, verse 43, the Lord told him this, Today, you will be with me in paradise. How's the word, amen? Paradise. People, the, if the Lord is telling you there's a paradise that exists, Know that when we breathe our last, when our end comes on this earth, there's a paradise that awaits us. Like a thief on the cross, where he was able to ask God for repentance, he was able to go to the place. May we believe that can be our portion as well. As I close with this time, I'll close with another illustration from one, a famous international speaker that I used to that I listen to every now and again. And the setting of this illustration is very much in the USA with a sport that we are not so accustomed to called American football. You know when they talk about a quarterback and they talk about the shoulder pads and those guys, Dallas Cowboys is that kind of sport, right? And if you're lost about what I'm talking about, I'm just as lost as you. I know cricket, I know tennis, right? I don't know that sport so much. But the setting is in American football. And there was one particular football player, a college player, that wasn't the very best. He was very much like a second grade player. He never made it the, the first team. He hardly started a game. He was just almost like a water boy. Someone just given a few duties. And, and, and he, was, he became very accustomed to not starting a match or not being called forth up front to play a certain match. And it so happened that this particular football player, his dad passed away. His dad passed away, and three days later, his team was going to play an intense match. They were going to play, they was going to play a, a championship match. And this boy was going to be part of the team. He knew already that he was not going to be chosen to be called for, uh, up front to play for this match. 
But he decided to approach the coach and say, Coach, I'm going to ask you for a favor. I'm going to ask you to do something that's a bit different. I want you to put me to play first in that match. I want you to put me in the first team to play this match. And the coach asked him, you are asking me a tough thing. You know, and especially, I, I don't get it because I know your dad passed away and, and you know there's other players better than you. How do you want me to put you in the first team? And he says, coach, just trust me. Just put me in the first team and if for some reason you see I'm not doing well, you can take me out. Take me out before the halfway mark. Just try me out. Put me in the first team. The championship match starts and the coach puts him in the first team and he's playing this match. All of a sudden, this boy is playing the game of his life. He is playing this game like people have never seen. And all of a sudden, the team is on the winning side because of this boy's efforts. Came through a half ten, they kept him on because he was playing a winning match. At the end of the match, the team won this match. And this man was very much the man of the match. People are shocked. Coach was shocked. He says, tell me, come here. I need to know what just took place. He says, I know normally you don't play like that. Normally we won't start you on to play this match. And, and, and just after your dad died, you know, can you tell me, can you explain to me what took place? And then the boy starts to speak. He says, coach, I don't think you know this. My dad was blind. But today was the first day that he was going to see me play. My dad was blind. But it's in a place where now he can see me play. People, that's the blessing of heaven. That's the blessing of people that believe in Jesus Christ. That believe in him who is the resurrection and the life. We wonder what can take place in a setting like this. How about if you don't know the resurrection, resurrection and the life this afternoon? You can know him today. Even in this setting, something good can take place. Even as I've been standing there in the ruins of the house, out of these ashes, beauty will rise, man. One of the famous songs from, my, from gospel artist, Stephen Curtis Chapman. Out of these ashes, something good can take place. Out of these ashes, beauty will rise. I pray that you will make a telling decision in your, in your life, even on a day like this. May God bless you. Let's pray at this time. Let's pray. Even as our musicians come forward and play this time, we're just going to sing praises to the Lord. And thereafter, we're going to call Pastor Vinod Singh to pray a special prayer of comfort to our family at this time. Even as they would say the final goodbyes, may they do so with hope. Hope in believing the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope in believing Him who is the resurrection and the life. Let's give Him worship and praise and thank Him for His touch. Thank Him for His power. Thank Him for every blessing that we have in His name. People, there are promises the Lord has given to us. Promises of eternal life. And of all things you do in this world, let's believe in His name. Let's believe in those promises.
before I pray for the family, I'd like to read a portion of scripture. In fact, I'd like to the family to come forward around the casket. Come on, Israel. Come on, Israel. Would you come close to the casket? I want you to come forward. Yes. All of you come, family members. Join us here at the casket. shall we say in response to these things if God is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Him who loved us, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor in anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus nothing will separate us from the love of Christ not even death or life today in the family I want to pray prayer as we release the beloved soul and the body today to God. I believe the Holy Spirit has been sent to comfort each one of the family members today. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious God and eternal Father, Today as we stand in this place to lift up your name and Lord we are standing here around two caskets one with grandpa and one with the child the grandson together with family the parents of Enzo as we are and and the family of our beloved Vinod Kumar Maraj. As a Maraj family and extended family, I declare the Holy Spirit will comfort the hearts of your dear ones. May you, Lord, give them strength and divine strength, Lord, in the inner man and in their hearts 
their mind and their wills that they will be refreshed in your presence Lord as we culminate today this service as we conclude and we believe that only you know all things as you know our coming in and you know we are going out you know our uprising you know our down sitting you know our thoughts i pray for the beloved families that you will grant them divine strength i be grateful father for the word of god that has a binding place in the hearts of each one and truly as we've declared as the servant of the lord has declared your word when you said i am the resurrection and the life we believe in the resurrection of the dead when the trumpet of the lord shall sound and the time shall be no more when all the heaven will break with the sound and the blast of the trumpet for the dead in christ shall rise up first and we that are here alive will simultaneously be caught up to meet the lord in the air what an assurance today father that we have a blessed assurance of the resurrection of the dead today we thank you for the blessing that you bring to each one of us and as we commit to family we ask you for peace and restfulness in each one of these in the mighty name of Jesus amen yeah, praise God amen thank God for the powerful prayer words of comfort from pastor Beyonce appreciate that amen especially the word of God that's been shared at this time as well maybe sit for a short while even as a cough pot pastor remember really at this time but he will also bring out bring forth the word, word of thanks
going on. Thank you, Pastor. We weren't ready for that vote of thanks, but indeed I had to step in a bit because I know that Pastor would be too modest to mention himself. People, I must say a hearty thank you to Pastor Mervyn Reddy and his ministry for all that you witnessed here this afternoon. Uh, he's been an amazing strength and support to our family. And uh, I've, it's amazing how I've only got to meet him around this time. But we thank God for his work and his ministry. And even though we've been approaching our family, he's always been one step ahead of me in planning and preparing for this funeral. And whenever I got to speak to him as pastor, the funeral service is provided. Pastor, the church is already available. Pastor, we don't see this church at Elevate. Pastor, various things are done. Pastor Bumdeni, we cannot thank you enough for your role in this family. Just last year, yesterday evening, I'm having a worship service at the home of Ashville and family. And to know that just days before that, that home was burnt to an extent where there was no even electrical connection. Pastor Mervyn came through yesterday and he actually fitted the, the electricity in the home. And I'm busy having a ministry meeting by even with the instruments being connected by the, with the electric uh, source just through the work of Pastor Mervyn. Really. So we thank God for you as a servant of God. We uh, special, uh, special thanks to our church in New Hope for providing the meals and for those of you that have contributed. We thank God for you. Amen. And as we close the, this time, let's rise to our feet and just pray God's blessing upon our people even as we will depart and depart with the grace of God. And in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you peace. These blessings we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Well, is, is there any other pastors available? Please join us for the final position in the stand. Pastors, you can come forward in the stand. Praise God.
the beloved this meals here and the cold drinks. Rice take one on your way out.